Welcome to Architects of Opportunities, a series on founders of nonprofit organizations. We will look at how one person or a few people saw a need in your community and found a way to fill it. Who are the people that are inspired to see a need and bring others together to lend a hand and not for profit? They are the nonprofit founders. Founders are everyday heroes. They envision possibility and persevere to accomplish it. Founders in all sectors and across the country share a common vision. They want to make a difference. Today, we will introduce you to one organization who makes a contribution to your community. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for coming and being part of the Founder Celebration. We're just so thrilled to have people from the Marin Symphony here today. And let me introduce Alistair Neal and Jeff Von Somm and Cecile Boddington. Cecile Boddington, thank you, and Steve Mockner. And so just a little bit about how you're associated with the symphony would be wonderful. Well, this is my 14th season for the orchestra now. I, I came in 2001, um, and so this is adding up quickly to, to 14 seasons. I lived in uh, the Bay Area for 25 years, but 14 of those are now part of my life in the Marin Symphony. Mm, wonderful. And Jeff? So I'm the executive director. This is my third season with the symphony, and I've had similar positions in uh, a couple different orchestras in the Midwest. I'm originally from the Northeast, from New York. Well, wonderful that you're in California. Wonderful. And Cecile? Well, I am the daughter of one of the founding musicians. My mother, Virginia Ojeda, played the bassoon with the orchestra for 46 years, so one of the original members. So I'm here to tell a few of her stories. We're so happy to have you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And Steve? I've played viola in the orchestra for 33 years. I've overlapped with Virginia Ojeda and, and the other founders. Um, lived in Marin with, and raised a family here. And our daughter uh, went through the Marin Symphony Youth Programs and played in the youth orchestra. So I've seen it from all perspectives. That's wonderful. Thanks so much for being here, everyone. And uh, Cecile, can you tell us a little bit about what it was like as a, as a young girl as you watched your parents start this? Do you know something about that? Well, they, they started the, the orchestra be before I was born, I, I must add. Um, it was, but music was every day in the household. It was, I would, you know, hear the practicing, I'd hear them practicing just scales and pieces. Um, but having my mother in the Marin Symphony was, was really a treat. She was, she was something she was very dedicated to. It was not only her profession, but a lot of her social life. So the founding members, you know, I think musicians become very close quite often within orchestras. Uh, my mother was also one of the first women bassoonists in the country, so that was unusual. And somebody once asked her, well, don't, don't you think, you know, what does your daughter think about you being a bassoonist? And my mother answered, well, she thinks all mothers are bassoonists. <laughs> so it's, uh, it was really a treat. When I was old enough, I was able to come to all the rehearsals and concerts also and be that audience uh, listening to uh, the, the fabulous music and watching the orchestra grow and develop. And that was, that was really a treat. That's, that's wonderful. And Steve, were they all, the founders, all part of the uh, San Francisco Symphony? I don't think all of them were, mm -hmm. but um, I know Charles Meacham was uh, one of the first violinists uh, in the San Francisco Symphony and others. And they felt that Marin ought to have its own orchestra. And so this is one of the orchestras that was actually started by musicians. And it always had a Marin community uh, kind of feeling to it. And I played in different orchestras, but um, there was always something special about this orchestra. There was a, a feeling of community, and people were very close friends. Um, there were members of the community uh, who were not full-time musicians, um, more then than now. Um, but uh, we would play chamber music together in each other's homes. and. Um, it, it was a very special, very warm atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And I understand that uh, Vera Schultz was one of the first, um, the first managing director. And uh, so what was it like as an orchestra to uh, 
you might talk about this too now because you're running it, um, Jeff, but to pull something together and make sure you had tickets sold and people coming, did you have trouble with that? or? Well, I can't speak to the past since I wasn't around it then, but I mean, I think, you know, the, the challenges are probably the same that they were the day this, this organization was started. The, the opportunities and the challenges are similar in many orchestras across the United States and the world. It's, um, it's about, first of all, having a, a, a mission and a vision that's consistent with the values of the community, um, and then executing that well and, and making sure that your story is told effectively, um, and then keeping the trains running on time. You know, a lot of it is about just the day-to-day making sure the stage is set up, making sure that the music director has what he needs, the orchestra has what they need, um, and, uh, and, and continuing to push forward with vision and boldness uh, as much as you can. Vera Schultz is one of the great founders of Marin County culture. She was one of the people who made the crucial difference in getting the Civic Center um, built and Frank Lloyd Wright being hired um, to be the architect to design it, and it's now a, a world class and world recognized landmark, um, there's a street in the Civic Center named after Vera Schultz. And that she was the first general manager of the Marin Symphony, says something about her commitment to building a, a cultural center uh, here in San Rafael and throughout the county. Where were the first uh, concerts held? The first concerts were at Marin Catholic uh, back in the 60s, um, or in the 50s actually. Um, and then uh, when the Civic Center was built and the uh, Marin Veterans Auditorium uh, was inaugurated, the Marin Symphony was the, uh, uh, the performer at the very first concert that inaugurated the new hall. Oh, that's, inter that's wonderful. Alistair, do you uh, know the music that was played then? Do you, do you replicate it today? Do you have some of the same? performances? Um, no, I actually I don't know what was uh, played back then, um, particularly in those, those first concerts. I, I try to bring my own um, sensibilities to programming um, and I, I try to figure out things that work for everybody, for the orchestra, for the public, uh, and to a lesser extent my own personal taste. Um, but I, I, it, it's like creating a menu in a way like a chef does. You have to create a dish uh, a number of dishes with balanced ingredients and you look at a whole season the way you would like a like a, a tasting menu and see is there something for everybody there. Um, so I'm, I'm mostly living in the present. That's why you're so well attended because you pay attention to what the culture wants today which is very different than it was in the 50s. So, yeah. Tastes change, that's, yes. that's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and there's nothing that predicts exactly what people are going to, to, to want. You can't please all the people all of the time, mm -hmm. but you want it to take a look at the big picture. And, and I hope that, that enough people are, are happy with what they're listening to and what they're seeing that they'll want to come and buy tickets. That's mm -hmm. the point of it. Mm -hmm. For many years, the musical stamp of the orchestra was imprinted by Shandor Shalgo. He became our uh, music director in 1958 and was our conductor for 33 years. And he had a very thick Hungarian accent, which became thicker as he, uh, the longer he stayed in California, the <laughs> thicker his Hungarian <laughs> accent became. And uh, but he was incredibly charming, a wonderful musician, had a very deep uh, intuitive sense for the uh, great classics. And so the orchestra was, uh, uh, was bred on the great classics. He was uh, he took us through a whole series of uh, all the Brahms symphonies, all the Brahms concertos, Beethoven, Tchaikovsky. He loved French music, um, so we developed a very distinctive sound under Shalgo. Um, he retired after 33 years, and Gary Sheldon was our conductor uh, for 10 years, and then we were very fortunate to have. Maestro Alistair Neal for the past 14 years has put his, uh, his own stamp on the orchestra. Well, thank you for that history. Uh, the founders were, uh, let's see, I'm going to read them off, Lucien Garrett Mitchell, uh, Jean Marie Matos McGuire Mitchell, Charles Allen Meacham, your mother Virginia Ojeda, and the maestro was Gaston, and we have come up with different pronunciations of this name, but what did we settle on? Usili? Usili, I think. Usili. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, one other one, Hugo Rinaldi, who started the Youth Symphony. And does anyone know how that came about? It was started quite um, early in, the, in 1925, I believe. Not he, in no, 25, he, no, 25, but um, I'm, I was waiting for you to mention him because we, you cannot name the founders of, of this organization without Hugo Rinaldi, um, who was the, uh, the leader of the youth programs for many, many years. And um, we're very proud of our youth symphony. Um, they've gone on tours. They've um, been a vital part of the uh, education of, of many hundreds of uh, young people, um, some of whom have gone on to become professional musicians, others have just enriched for their whole lives. And um, Hugo retired um, and was replaced by uh, several successors, uh, uh, and we, uh, Ann Kranitsky is now the, um, uh, the leader of the youth orchestra and is doing a wonderful job. And um, Jeff, can you tell us a little bit about that orchestra? How does uh, a, a young person get into it? What are the age, ages of the orchestra? Sure. Yeah, so I think, as Steve mentioned, we take great pride in our youth orchestra and our youth programs. Um, they are really the future of orchestral uh, music in our country today. Um, and uh, it, it's a very competitive process. It's by competitive application, competitive audition. Uh, we currently have three different youth ensembles, youth orchestra, and then two um, feeder orchestras that, that build up to the youth orchestra. Um, and it's a run to the academic year. They have two concerts a year and a number of other um, uh, opportunities to engage with the community. We have what we call sit-in concerts where you can sort of try out the orchestra, test drive the orchestra if you're interested in joining. Um, and, uh, and it's very rigorous. Our, our, our approach for education is that it's both rigorous and nurturing at the same time. Never easy and never mean. It should be it should be tough. They should learn as much as they can possibly learn and then apply that into other aspects of their life. So we take great pride in what we do. Well, it's a great synergy between the, um, the main orchestra and the youth programs because many of the uh, players in the orchestra are teachers uh, who teach the students in the youth orchestra and they also, and they, they prepare their students and help them with the auditions. Um, they then coach them and um, give them lessons during the uh, during the season, and so it's it's a nice balance um, at, where both each organization helps the other. Plus, we actually have a number of members of the Marin Symphony Orchestra that are former members of the Youth Orchestra. Oh, so is there's that a nice right? kind of continuation of that tradition there. That's wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. It must be a big celebration when some, one of those kids get get in. Yeah, I think it's, it's a nice uh, inner circle. If you're a member of, you had been in the youth orchestra and now you're in the Marin Symphony, I think uh -huh. there's a sort of a special bond that you always, you always keep. Yeah. Uh, and this season, actually, at the end, we can talk about it a little bit. This is the 60th anniversary of our youth orchestra this year. And so we have a special uh, element of our final Masterworks concert planned in, in April. We'll have a side-by-side -side performance uh, for one of the pieces with our, with our youth orchestra along with the full orchestra. Which means that we have to try and fit two orchestras on stage at once. Oh my goodness. Uh, and so that the members of the youth orchestra will be sitting next to their professional counterparts um, oh, wow. during the rehearsals and the concerts. So there's obviously oh. an element of mentorship there. Uh, there's nothing quite like sitting next to a really top professional musician to make you raise your own game. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's going to be a really wonderful celebration of excellence and education and the joy of making music together. Well, I would think, uh, Cecilia, that, that some of that nurturing must stem from your mother being the woman that was part of the original group. Yeah, I think, you know, most musicians really do try to bring up the next generation of musicians. So many musicians teach and um, really encourage the next generation to uh, participate in music. And, and uh, I know my parents were really supportive of the, the uh, youth orchestra and that, you know, that w it was all about education and the, the fact that we should all have a basic education in music to begin with, but then uh, for those that have some musical talent, be able to take it up the next steps to finally professionalism was, was really important to them. So it's, uh, Did a lot of the performers bring their children? We have some children here today, Jeff's you children. Know, I, I don't remember a lot of other children. I was brought to many, many 
well, every, every rehearsal as soon as I could stay up late enough and every concert after that. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think a lot of the kids came to the concerts, especially mm -hmm. I somehow managed to get in on the rehearsals as well, but I was often the only one out in the audience just having the orchestra to myself. It you was, must have been particularly well behaved. For I, your I was a very quiet <laughs> little girl. <laughs> yes. It was actually sort of nice at one point, too, being probably the only young thing there. Uh, uh, Sandor Shalgo asked me to present the flowers to one of our soloists. So I got to be up on that. was my one moment on stage, was carrying flowers to Corinne Swall, uh, an opera singer who sang with the orchestra, and being able to present on, on stage. But. Uh, that, that was my moment of glory, and that was as far as I, I go musically. <laughs> so, uh. My wife used to bring our daughter to the concerts, mm -hmm. and these were, all the concerts were in the evening in those days. And so after a while, she learned that, uh, to, bring, to bring her in her pajamas with her teddy bear. And then she would go out uh, pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, that was her routine. And, uh, I think you do performances with the young people for young people today, right? So you're wanting to engage them out of the high schools and the junior high schools and bring it into uh, their lives. And does the youth orchestra promote that in, in Marin and the schools? Do they go into the schools? Well, um, absolutely. I mean, a lot of our of our thrust of our efforts are in about engaging the community as a whole and families especially. Uh, and a lot of our new programming in the last few years have uh, much e revolved around that concept of being uh, valued by the whole family from grandparents to grandkids and even the dog. Um, and so, yes, the youth orchestra is involved with promotion, although I'd say our, our efforts um, with our family concerts and our waterfront pops and holiday pops concerts really spread way beyond just the youth orchestra. That's really supposed to be for families, whether you're already a musician or just interested in music and interested in entertainment. Mm -hmm. The youth orchestra concludes its concerts with what they call a petting zoo. And they bring um, a, a selection of instruments that are lent to us by the magic flute. And the kids who come to the concerts get to try out the instruments. Mm -hmm. And so um, they'll see which instrument they might want to uh, learn how to play. Cecilia, did you play an instrument as a young? You know, I, I was given piano lessons starting at age six because I begged for them, of course. And uh, it, it became apparent after not that much time that I really don't have the musical talent. I took six years of lessons. I really tried. I enjoyed it. But audience is really my skill. <laughs> and some of us have to be in the audience. Uh -huh. So I have learned to take that responsibility very seriously. <laughs> I have a huge appreciation for music. And uh, I, I really appreciate my upbringing with you know, both my parents being musicians in the household. Um, but no musical talent. That's wonderful that you that you and I are both the audience. <laughs> We're important. It's I'm, a I very, know that. very important That's role. Right. Without, <laughs> without you, we will be nowhere. <laughs> And so, uh, any last things you'd like to leave the community with in terms of our founders and how it was to, to be in an orchestra that's been such a, a, a long-standing, uh, wonderful um, benefit to our Marin, Marin community? Well, it's been such a treat to watch the orchestra grow and develop and better themselves over all these decades. And truly, it is the founders' shoulders that we're all standing on. And I, I just appreciate that they had the courage to go ahead and start something like this. And we're still reaping the benefits, and we'll continue to for so long. Wonderful. Thank you. I would just add a profound sense of gratitude, exactly as Cecile said. I mean, without the, the substantial groundwork that's been laid uh, before us, um, we, would, we would be so, so much further behind. And so we're very appreciative of what has already been done and, and the community's support. Uh, but I think more than that, the, the work's still ahead of us. And, and our constant goal of trying to refine our values and vision to mirror those of the community um, and to bring forward a, an artistic product that is really, really high quality um, and enjoyable, entertaining, enriching, and, ed and, and educating the community as well. Thank you. The founders had a vision of classical music, orchestral music performed live before local audiences in Marin. And not only did they have that vision, but they acted on it. And it was their passion for the music. 
as, as musicians to, to create it and to share it. And we're the beneficiaries of that. And we're all very grateful. And it's up to us to see if we can keep it going. Wonderful. And I feel some of that weight of history on my shoulders since it's up to me to, to be the front person for, for bringing the orchestra on into the 21st century. And um, I'm just keenly aware of, of the sense of passion that they must have felt all of those years ago when they founded the orchestra and how important they felt it to be part of the community. And that's a message that I think we need to trumpet, no, no pun intended, but loud and clear as, uh, as we move forward, then that is what an important part of a community a symphony orchestra is. Uh, it's one of these things that people can go in a kind of secular communion together. They can partake in the shared experience of beautiful art and beautiful music uh, in a way that you can't do at all in your own living room, not with the best sound system in the world. I defy you to, to compare that experience to what it means like to go to a concert. Um, and, and so, I think it's a really important measure of a community uh, uh, to have a symphony orchestra. It's something that binds people together, and without it, the community would be quite poorer. Um, so we, we rely very much on people's support to keep us moving forward and keeping the vision alive. Well, thank you so much. Beautiful, wonderful. Thank you very much. It was great to celebrate the founders with you today and have you be part of this program. Thanks thank very much. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you. Welcome.
I help nonprofits hire staff and leaders to carry on their founders' vision. And so I've seen hundreds of nonprofits contribute to our community. We created Architects of Opportunities to share that with you. Now, nonprofit founders will tell you they don't do it alone. If you're among the 25% of us who are volunteers or volunteer board members or staff or donors, thank you. And if you're not, please join us in making a difference.